If you're curious on how the hormone insulin affects two hunger hormones, ghrelin and leptin, if you are healthy or if you have diabetes, then this content is for you. I'm going to show you a little data from a scientific study, then explain the physiological mechanisms potentially underpinning these results. Stay tuned. Learn Your Body, a science-based education. This information is provided to us by a study that I'll have linked for you, as well as my notes and amendments after this content's publishing. The researchers of the study recruited four men and two women that were diabetic and another four men and two women that were non-diabetic. And then these individuals had insulin administered to their bloodstream by infusion. The researchers had five conditions they tested, but we'll only focus on a few of them. Condition one included no previous manipulation of the diabetic group, just fasting overnight. Condition two, the diabetic participants were primed with insulin overnight before the study or measurement period began. Condition three, the diabetic participants were primed with insulin for 67 hours before the measurement period. Then the researchers had a control group, including the healthy non-diabetic individuals that were given insulin only during the experimental period. And the final group was the healthy participants given only saline, so no insulin. Ultimately, the actual measurement period included a set amount of insulin being administered to all the participants over 300 minutes, and then measuring what happens to blood ghrelin levels and blood leptin levels, both of which are hunger hormones. Ghrelin, when elevated, is typically associated with greater hunger, so a direct relationship. However, leptin is the opposite, reduced leptin is considered a higher hunger, an inverse relationship. With that, let's jump into the data. Here, we're looking at ghrelin. Again, the higher the ghrelin, the association with greater hunger, or said differently, reduced ghrelin implies less hunger. As we see, the insulin administration to the healthy non-diabetic individuals led to a steady decline in ghrelin. This was also observed in the diabetic individuals, but the effect was significantly delayed. The same was not true for any other diabetic condition that involved priming with insulin before the experiment. This data implies that healthy individuals experience reductions in ghrelin when they are exposed to insulin, and that diabetic individuals might as well, but the sensitivity to insulin is reduced, leading to a dampened effect. This is interesting because it means that on a purely insulin-centric basis through ghrelin, diabetics get less dampening of their hunger after an equal meal, potentially. Okay, how about leptin though? Remember, the higher the leptin, the less hunger association. Predictably, the saline group that did not receive insulin had the lowest level of leptin. However, the healthy participants that received the insulin saw an over 25% boost in leptin, and a boost that was also experienced in the first diabetic condition. Although the boost seems less impactful by comparison, although that is statistically unverified. So this follows lockstep with the ghrelin results. Insulin increases leptin levels in healthy and diabetic, with a likely blunted effect in diabetics. All right, fine, but what is thought to be the reason for all this? There are a few proposed mechanisms according to the researchers, potentially through insulin binding the stomach where ghrelin is released as a sensation of stomach fullness. Insulin would therefore reduce ghrelin release, independent of stomach fullness. A similar mechanism is thought to occur with leptin and fat cells, because insulin can bind the fat cells, increasing leptin secretion. It's then believed that ghrelin and leptin cross the blood-brain barrier, and increased ghrelin increases the secretion of neuropeptide Y, NPY, as well as a duty-related protein, or AGRP, both of which induce appetite, hunger, when released from the brain. Meanwhile, leptin does the exact opposite by inhibiting both neuropeptides as leptin levels increase. So a double effect of reduced ghrelin and increased leptin reduce NPY and AGRP release. Not only that, insulin is known to inhibit directly as well. 
This means that insulin, independent of food, reduces ghrelin and increases leptin, which, although untested here, would imply reduced hunger. This effect is also found in diabetics, but the effect is blunted and requires higher levels of insulin to achieve. With that, I hope this proved informative, and I hope to have the pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Cheers! Mm -hmm.